Recently, I've been working on a seascape painting depicting some islands at the mouth of the Marlborough Sounds, the South Island of New Zealand. These are the Chetwodes. And I've been playing with this idea in my mind for some time, and I decided to go ahead and get started doing some designs and work out what I wanted the composition to look like. Of course, this always starts in the sketchbook. And this is really where my problems began. Whenever I have a big project to do, I always start in the sketchbook. I work out that idea thoroughly first. But sometimes we get particularly attached to things in our artwork that we just can't let go of. Now there's a concept in writing called kill your darlings. I know that sounds absolutely awful, but for a writer, sometimes a character or a plot point something in the story that they've grown particularly attached to no longer serves the greater purpose. And sometimes these things need to be cut in order to create something truly great. And the same is true for painting. Sometimes we create details and passages within a painting that we're absolutely fixated on and we love, but they get in the way and they stop us from really seeing our vision through to its maximum potential. So this is a story of letting go of those little things that we're particularly attached to in order to create something awesome. At least I hope it's gonna be awesome in the end. Here's my digital design. At least this is the first digital design that I produced of this painting. And I thought it was pretty cool. It had some nice things going for it. And I decided at this point to go ahead and paint it. But as I said, it's not all there, but we'll get to that. The canvas that I'm painting on measures 40 by 72 inches, so it's not small by any means, and I project my digital design directly to this. Again, for the haters, it's my design. I made it, so I can go ahead and project it. It saves me loads of time having to draw this out by hand. And once I've got all my major lines in place, I then start laying in that color. Now, I didn't know it at this point, but I'd have to repaint every area of this painting. If only I knew then what I know now. Man, that would have saved me some time. Now, I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Tish, the design's perfect. That scene is epic. I can't think of another possible thing you could do that would improve the situation. And I thank you for that. You're very kind. We should hang out sometime. But here, one thing that I started to realize is whatever was little in my painting was suddenly made so much bigger. And that rock, that shark fin spiky rock, I really loved this feature and I'd grown quite attached to it. But I was afraid I might have to do something drastic. I decided to finish up the block in. Maybe it was just looking weird because I hadn't filled it all in with color yet. I decided to revisit my inspiration while I waited for the paint to dry, hoping that I'd come up with some sort of solution. Shout out to my young friend, Daniel. We took his boat out to the mouth of the Marlborough Sounds to visit the Chetwodes once more. The conditions were perfect. When I'm in the field, I try to gather as much material as possible. If that's painting plein air, or I have my sketchbook handy, perfect. Sometimes though, you don't get to work from life and in conditions like this, you might get a little seasick. So photographs and video really helps fill in those gaps back in the studio. We explore these little islands and I'm shooting hundreds of photographs as we go along. I'm blessed to live so close to this area. And I can definitely see potential for at least another 20 paintings. Don't be fooled by the calm conditions. It gets pretty wild out here.
That trip certainly did the trick. I came back with a head full of fresh new ideas, and I realized where I was going wrong. It was going to require a creative solution. It's time to turn up the heat on this idea and see if we can really get things going. This is oil-based modeling clay, and here I thought, I'm going to make a rock. Now this rock's pretty cool, but I want to make one. I was starting to warm to the idea that the painting that I had blocked in wasn't quite going to cut it, and that I might need to find some of these creative solutions to make it better. Inspired by the scene that was still firmly in my mind, I get loose, playful, and start to create something that I think might be interesting. As I sculpt my rock, I'm thinking about the facets, turns, cracks, grooves, and crevices, all these interesting things that might catch the light. And so you might be wondering, why not just use one of those rocks that you found? Well, why use one of those rocks when you can make one? I start to think about the form of the rock that I would like to have in my painting, how the light's going to hit it. I want something with character, but also something that looks quite natural. A perfect element in that landscape that's not going to draw the eye too much, but at the same time, it'll just complete the composition. I burnish the rock with a lighter. This just melts the top surface of modeling clay, giving a nice sheen. I didn't even bother to sculpt the back side. I had settled on this side. And I thought, this is it. This is what the painting needs. That darling rock that I was so attached to was about to be swapped out for this one. I'm much happier with this. But before I go back to the painting, I need to hit that drawing board or the Wacom tablet one more time. My initial digital design took me about a week to produce. I'm not that quick when it comes to digital. Little did I know, what I thought was going to be just a couple of days of shuffling things around took another eight days. Once I'd gotten used to the fact that the entire idea had to change, I started to find that flow state and the hours just melted away. By letting go of my initial idea, by turning loose of my darlings, by killing them, so to speak, I ended up discovering new things and taking this image into new directions that I wouldn't have previously considered. Now, I guess it's a matter of opinion. Maybe you liked the previous design, but I think I'm on the right track with this one. Besides, in this new design, there's a beach. That's pretty cool. I worked and worked till my fingers were sore and my eyes went bloodshot. Sometimes you gotta suffer for your art. Now, one thing the digital process allows me to achieve with my paintings is to create a bit more of a sense of realism and detail. I can put so much into these designs. There's no photography added here. It's all drawn on the Wacom tablet, one layer at a time. But when it comes to creating realistic water, sometimes using that layer feature really helps not only get that transparency, but also that moving reflection over the top. This took ages, but I think it ended up looking pretty cool. Now, I just have to paint it. I am so much happier with this. It feels a lot easier on the eye, and it even has more depth. This communicates the things that I really want to say with this painting. Feeling fresh and excited about this new design and new direction, I waste no time in getting this onto the canvas and I'm just going to paint right over the top of whatever I had done previously. Now if I'm honest, I was cringing a little bit. The thought of all those hours, weeks in fact, of abortive work. But then, would I have come up with this idea had it not been for all of that effort?
I sketch right over the top using a brush loaded with quinacridone magenta and titanium white. I want these lines to really stand out so I can see where to place the major elements in the composition. That background is going to be a little bit distracting, but here we're going to just approach it the same way I did in the beginning, starting with whatever's furthest away and working my way forward. With the tweaks in the design, I had a bit more space to play with with this sky, and I decided to take it in a different direction, changing the mood and the atmosphere completely. I'm a sucker for dramatic skies, and I just love cumulus clouds, the way they catch that late afternoon light, and a whole array of violets show up in those shadows. I think this will help the composition by getting rid of some of that overcast look in my previous design. Now layering over the top of an existing painting is not a problem. When I'm painting, I'm mixing in little amounts of liquid original. And this helps the painting layers dry, generally within about 24 hours. But here, this is pretty much dry all the way through. It's been a couple of months between sittings. Also, titanium white does help drive that opacity to make sure I get even more coverage between these layers. And one thing you might notice, particularly if you're familiar with this landscape, is that I'm using both the inspiration that I gathered from the exact location and also a bit of imagination. I rarely paint a scene exactly the way it looks in my reference material. I always find there's things I want to do, add or take away to create more of a story. As I paint these rocks, I think to myself, and wonder what this scene would look like in the middle of winter during one of those epic winter storms rolling in off the Tasman Sea. What does it take to grow here if you're a little tree? What kind of root system must you have to cling to these rocks without falling off into the water below? And what started off as a little clay model, a little maquette, I think has ended up being a pretty cool feature in this painting. Now there's still a long way to go. This is only the first layer of paint. We've got another five or six to add. So I hope you'll join me again in the studio as this project unfolds. Thanks so much for spending this time with me here. I'll see you in the next video. Let me ask you something. Do your paintings fall short of your vision? Are you feeling overwhelmed with the abundance of information out there that you're just not sure where to start? Or maybe you're just somebody who wants to level up and unlock some cool new techniques and take your painting up a notch. Well, I've got just the thing for you. It's called Tish Academy. It's an online art school and a thriving community. With well over 100 hours of exclusive video content and hundreds of dedicated artists on board, whether you're into portrait painting, landscapes, still life, or drawing, Tish Academy will skyrocket your artistic development. Not only are there exclusive videos on a wide variety of topics, but there's also critique videos, technical deep dives, some videos on professional artistic development to help you with your art career. But there's also royalty-free reference material and just about every week, I go live from the studio with my Academy tier members. But don't just take my word for it. Here's some Tish Academy members who have loved their experience so far. This is how I used to paint before. This is where I am now. Thanks a lot, Andrew. You have been a great influence on me. I would recommend whether you're a beginner or whether you're the professional, Watch this guy, he's amazing, and what he teaches and what he gives us back, bingo, it works. I'm really happy to be part of Tish Academy. Andrew's teachings are so thorough and so in-depth. He covers a broad range of subjects, landscapes, portraits, plein air. I would highly recommend Tish Academy to anyone that loves to paint. This is my first thing, and this is now where I'm at. This is our, our daughter. That's what you can get out of Tish Academy. Now to get in, it's super simple. All you've got to do is click that link in the description down below, set up your profile and select your tier, whether it's studio tier at $5 per month or the academy tier at $18 per month. 
There's a lot of information out there and it can be really overwhelming and really daunting. And if you're stuck in the studio and not really sure how to progress, this could be the thing that you're looking for. As a member of Tish Academy, you'll be armed with a methodology and you'll know just what to do next time you want to tackle that dream project. And not to mention, you'll be able to interact with hundreds of members from around the world who are just as passionate about art as you are. Now I'm going to make it super painless. If you click that link down below, you're going to get a seven day free trial. You're not locked into any contract, but it also comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So click below and check it out. Become the artist you're destined to be. I'll see you there.